<laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 It's good to see you all. And uh, we're excited. This is Mother's Day, right? Uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Um, and uh, just so glad that everyone could be with us. And uh, it's, it looks like it's kind of a half good, half cloudy day out there, half sunny, half cloudy. But um, we're just looking forward to the fellowship that we'll have here together. And let me just uh, open in prayer this morning. God, thank you for uh, visiting with us virtually. Thank you that we're, we're spread out over the kilometers, uh, different ends of our county. And some people are even going to see this tomorrow or, or later today from much further away. Uh, and thank you so much that you can actually minister uh, digitally through time and space and that it, it, you're not confined to the present moment, but you're, you're visiting with each one of us and you're bringing us together in, in, in really a miracle, not only digitally, but spiritually, a miracle of unity. Thank you for all that you do in our lives. And this morning, as we meet together, as we lift up your name, as we hear from your word, uh, we want to connect with you uh, so that we leave this time together um, enriched in our spirits, encouraged in our heart, uh, blessed in our, in our fellowship, and, and just being that much, um, that much more in love with you, Jesus. So we commit this next uh, moment, these next moments to you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we, um, we just want to start this morning with a, a fun little video. Could, would you uh, allow me to do that? Just um, here we go. I'm going to share my screen with you. Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back. Mommy, where are you going? Sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know, to recharge. Go talk to daddy. Mommy! Where are you? Mommy, where are you? Mommy, where are you? No matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom, you're breaking everything. In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you'd speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in Hello, everyone. I'm back. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's, um, Karen, I think you have a couple of things you want to talk to us about. Why don't you yes. go ahead and share? Greetings in Jesus' name. I trust that each one of you are thriving in this challenging environment of COVID-19. 
The Big Give team has some exciting news for each and every one of you who call Glad Tidings uh, their home church. The Big Give this year is going to look and feel a little bit different than it has in previous years. Instead of hosting the Big Give um, on June the 6th, like we did um, June the 6th at our church, we are asking everyone to become involved, showing radical generosity in a few different ways. You can choose any or all of the following ways to get involved. Celebrating the unsung heroes in our community that are continuing to serve us behind the scenes, such as our sanitation workers, could be our postal carriers, could be our lab uh, or the lab technicians um, drawing blood, could be the um, um, house cleaners at our hospital, or anyone in our neighborhood who could use some financial help. If you would like to thank and bless any of these workers or neighbors, purchase a gift certificate um, from a local establishment. It could be from Barnaby's, it could be from Tim Hortons or Starbucks or the Twisted Fork. They have delicious food there, by the way, uh, or Foodsmith. And there's, there's, there's multiple more. I'm just not gonna talk about them. You then would be able to put, you would put them inside a card with a message similar to this. Doesn't have to be like this, but this is just an example. On behalf of Glad Tidings Church on Wayside Drive and the Big Give, we want to treat you with a gift certificate. So if God is laying on your heart to purchase a gift certificate, uh, we would ask you to deliver them as close to as possible to the uh, June the 6th. And though also, those that are planning on purchasing a gift certificate, if you would be so kind to uh, just send an email to um, GTPC, info at GTPC, Perth, um, stating that you have done so. We just don't want to keep a track of how many gift certificates go out and how God's blessing our community in that way. So number two, grocery bags for Lanark Highlands Food Bank. There are many people going to the food bank for the first time. In, in a, like, yeah, for the first time. Can you imagine having to go to the food bank because you've been laid off or what, for whatever reason? The food, Lanark Food Bank is in, ex, is in extreme need of groceries for the community that it serves. And if you choose to help in this way, please pick up items to fill the grocery bag. Uh, we are asking that the bags would be brought to the church on Friday, June the 5th, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. At noon, we'll, we will be delivering um, the bag grocery bags to, to the food bank in Lanark. We, um, on June, Friday, June the 5th, we will also be selling um, cloth masks at the church between 10 and 12 p.m. And uh, the, Diane Jackson is presently making those masks and uh, we're selling them for $5. And the proceeds from those masks that day will go towards purchasing more groceries for the Lanark Food Bank. Um, some highly urgent e uh, items that are needed, powdered milk, crackers, um, oatmeal, um, bathroom tissue, can you imagine? Uh, soap indiv and, and individually wrapped. Canned goods such as meat, fish, beans, soup, whatever. Peanut butter, pasta and pasta sauce, and uh, cereal and gran granola bars. And, and, and uh, things like applesauce packs and, and uh, fruit sauce packs for the kids that are going to school. Please do not bring outdated items, previously opened items, cat or animal food, vitamins or medications, fresh fruit or vegetables, 
or any spoiled items. This is an opportunity to give your best. Please note, when you pack the bag or give a gift card, please remember that it is Jesus who you are giving it to. And remember, it's not the quantity, it is the hard quality that the Lord would like. And thank you from myself and the Big Give team. Amen. Thanks, Karen, for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, and Pastor Nathan is going to lead in worship in just a moment. Just let me say that there is prayer on um, Monday and Wednesday mornings at 11 o'clock. If you want to zoom in, you can. It's in your newsletter. Uh, they also take prayer requests. So you can phone in or email in a prayer request. And uh, this Tuesday, we're sending you a special uh, Tuesday update. So please be aware and watch for that. Pastor Nathan, would you lead us in worship? Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to uh, see everyone again on this nice day, on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers and all women who just uh, we look to and honor. And this morning, I just, uh, we have a video again of myself leading worship. I know it's a little different format, but I really felt like as I was preparing in worship, I was just connecting with the heart of God and just uh, worshiping. And I pray that as you're able to uh, listen today, may you just join with me <laughs> via video and uh, let's just worship God together. God is so good. And uh, so just enjoy. And then I want to just pray and uh, speak again after we watch this together. the 
earth will shout your praise. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Praise are you, Lord. Sing that again. All the earth will shout. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing.
love of God gave me his heart the love of God will let me stay the same the love of God calls me a higher his will is stronger that's why I got saved I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right Got a hold of my life Got Jesus, could I want more? I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right Got a hold of my life Got Jesus Could I want more? I've got Jesus Could I want more? I've got Jesus Could I want more? Well, we just want to give us all an opportunity here to um, to go into prayer. Pastor Nathan's going to lead us in, in just a moment here in prayer and and hey, uh, when we do have Jesus, what what can what more can we ask for? But uh, right now, each of us might be in a situation beside the COVID nineteen lockdown that um, you just really need God to intervene. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to ask you um, to just uh, lift your hand. Uh, Pastor Nathan's going to pray, but just going to ask you to put your hand up if, if you just want to signal to God and to the community that's watching here that you need prayer, uh, just as we would in, in a church situation, come to the front and maybe we'd pray for each other. But in this situation, just with an upraised hand, just signifying as Pastor Nathan leads us in prayer that um, you are asking God for something special. So just go ahead, Pastor Nathan, you um, lead us in that prayer. Man, Lord Jesus, <laughs> Lord, we thank you that uh, that we have you. Lord Jesus, how could we ask for anything more? Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, in your powerful, wonderful, awesome name, Lord, that you just come and meet our needs. We see so many people, Lord, as we just lift our hands, as we just commit and admit to you, Lord God, we need you. Lord, we need you every hour in every situation. And God, as we just want to bear each other, Lord God, in prayer, we want to lift up these requests to you right now. Lord, I don't know all the details of everybody's hearts or everybody's requests, but God, you know and you intercede on our behalf. Lord God, the writer of Hebrews says. So God, we just want to come to you. We want to bring our needs to you and just ask for the powerful, wonderful, all sufficient name of Jesus, Lord, that you meet our needs. Lord, for people who are in the hospital, or people, Lord God, who have just gone through surgeries, Lord, people who have health needs, financial needs, emotional needs, everything, Lord, we can cast our cares upon you. God, we thank you that we serve a risen Savior. Lord God, we're not just offering our voices to nothing, but God, you are powerful and awesome and alive and working on our behalf. So Lord, just hear our cry, hear our prayers, and may you just be uh, lifted up today. And as we just honor mothers today, Lord, as we look at a message that just uh, honors and reflects, Lord, the characteristics of you, Lord, in our moms and in our women, Lord, that uh, you just might be glorified and we might just appreciate who you are even more. Lord, just be glorified today. In your name, amen. 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 Thank you uh, very much, Pastor Nathan, uh, for that. And uh, just giving us uh, just a, a touch of God's, um, God's heart. Um, I want to thank you again, as last week uh, Robert mentioned, 
um, just a, an excellent uh, thank you that he gave on behalf of, of the board and the church family uh, to everybody who's continuing to uh, donate and give. And um, we say thank you for doing that. Thank you for um, helping. Uh, even in this time when, uh, you know, we're, our, many of us, our resources are limited, uh, but we're still able to uh, help in some way. Uh, you can mail checks directly to Carolyn um, at 2054 Drummond Concession 9 or uh, e-transfer and we'll be um, out, uh, outlining a new way to give just uh, very shortly uh, here in the church. So uh, thank you to everybody who has done that. Now, um, let me just introduce to you uh, our guest speaker for this morning. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, have heard the name Joanne Goodwin. She has been a guest here at our church in the past. And as I mentioned last week, um, I had been trying to get her for an upcoming Mother's Day uh, about three years ago or two years ago. We were discussing, I, I, Joanne, I'd like to get you to come and do a Mother's Day. And, and, and next year and the year after and the year, she was booked. She's been booked for so long. And, and um, uh, so jokingly, I said to her, okay, 2032, you're going to come to our church in 2032. And uh, she said, okay, great. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. So um, we're just blessed to have her 12 years earlier um, today to come and share God's word. Joanne is a wonderful communicator, a beautiful woman of God that, that really um, can open up his word to us. Let's listen as um, now she shares with us a special Mother's Day recording that she has made available um, to the church across Canada. Good morning, happy Mother's Day. Thanks for letting me into your living room. I love the decor. I love the pajamas you're wearing. You got your coffee, some of you have snacks. I got my coffee. Wouldn't this be beautiful every Sunday morning if you could come in in your pajamas with a cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah. It's Mother's Day though. And you know, what does that mean when I say that? When you hear, happy Mother's Day, like some of you, you got great kids, you got a wonderful mother, and you think, yay, I'm going to celebrate all this wonderful motherhood. And some of you are thinking it brings sadness. Because maybe your kids are lost and in dark places, and you're worried and you're concerned, and so it kind of brings a pain to you. And some of you, God forbid, have lost a child. Can't even imagine that kind of agony. And some of you don't have your own children, and some of you have planned it that way, and you're delighted, and you're happy. Some of you don't have biological children, and it hurts you, and it brings a pain to you because you really wanted to have your own children. Just we all have different ideas. Some of you, maybe you never really had a mother who cared for you. Some mothers have abandoned their children at birth. Some kept them and just abused them and I mean, mother holds a different picture for so many of us. But I, I hope that as we talk about this Mother's Day, I'm not going to do the whole Proverbs 31 thing. We all know we can't do that. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I, it's, it's there. It's, it's good. But you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about how God mothers us and comforts us. And you say, well, hey, you, know, you, can't, you can't just say that. Well, you know, I can in, in Isaiah 66, verse 13, it says, As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. God said that himself to his people. As a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. And I want to talk about some of the comfort the Lord gives to us. His mothering, his nurturing. And, you know, often we relate that more to a woman. I, I know it's not always fair because some men are much more nurturing than their wives. Um, my husband is a nurturer, and he's really good at it, and he's fabulous at it. But it doesn't mean that, that also it doesn't mean that if you're a nurturer, it doesn't mean as a woman that you can't also be a strong warrior for God. And a, but it's just that some of these associations are usually made towards women. We tend to be seen as the more nurturing. And, you know, they've done some great leadership studies. And when they discovered the leadership styles of men and women, they have often found that women tend to be more nurturing towards their staff, more inclusive. So, I don't know. So, we're just going to call it the mothering part of God. 
um, you know, in that verse I just read to you that um, he said, as, as, I, as a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. Do you know, that comes from Isaiah 66. And in Isaiah chapters 56 to 66, are, it, it contains an oracle that was written to God's people after exile and after the second temple was built. And, you know, some of the people, when they saw the new temple, wept because they remembered the old one. They remembered the one in all its glory that, that Solomon had built. And, and they longed for the old. And some people left family behind in Babylon. And some of them died in Babylon. And some of them are still there. And they're back in their homeland, but they're under foreign rule now. And it's just not the same as it was. And so in that oracle to them, he says, as, as, a, um, as a mother comforts a child, so will I comfort you. And, you know, I was thinking of this pandemic. When it's over, people say, oh, it'll never be the same. Everything's going to be different. And I, I don't know. I don't know what it'll look like. Some people will have lost their businesses. Some people will have lost a loved one who had to die alone. Finances, situations, school, I don't know what it's going to look like. But perhaps this same thing can apply to us. Perhaps God is saying to you, be comforted. I can comfort you just like your mother comforts you. I've got that here for you. You know, one of the ways that um, when I think of a, a mother's comfort, I show it by cooking. I cook. I love to cook for my children. I love to bake for my children. That's how I show them love, one of the ways. It's just, you know, even during this pandemic, Easter Easter Sunday, you know, we took a big basket of homemade pancakes and sauce and whipped cream and strawberries and my homemade cupcakes, oh, they were beautiful. Green and yellow and pink, beautiful. Little Easter eggs on top. That's how I was showing them my love. Look what I've done for you to show you my love. Well, you know, I, I like to say we have a God who sometimes cooks for us. Yeah, well, uh, there's a couple examples in the Bible. One of them was in the Old Testament in 1 Kings 19. When Elijah, who had just had a, a huge victory, he, um, he, you know, the, with the prophets of Baal, and they wanted to pray down fire, and they begged their gods, and they did everything they could, and they danced, and they called, and no fire. Then Elijah said, not only will I call down fire, but soak this baby with water. They poured water all over the thing, and he prayed, and of course, God came, consumed the, the sacrifice, consumed the altar, licked up the water, it says, Great, a great victory, and then the prophets of Baal were destroyed. And then he heard that Jezebel, the wicked queen, was going to kill him. I guess he got scared, maybe he got depressed, maybe you get the blues after a big victory, sometimes that happens, but he ran away, and at one point, he left his servant aside and said, let me let, just go into the desert, I'm just going to go into the desert by myself. And he did, and he, he found a broom tree, I don't know what a broom tree is, I could have researched it, but I didn't bother. I heard the word broom, thought of housekeeping. I don't like broom trees. Actually, apparently, it's a kind of a sheltering, low-level tree. He went under that tree, and he said, God, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Kill me. Pretty low state to be in. But what I like is God didn't immediately go to him and say, okay, Look what I just did. And now you're sitting here saying you want to die. Come on, what's your problem? Get up. Are you not trust me anymore? No, you know what he did? It said the angel of the Lord woke him up and said, I baked just some bread over coals. And I got a jug of cold water here for you. You see, the angel of the Lord is a phrase that's used many times in the Old Testament to mean uh, a manifestation of God himself or Jesus. Uh, we call it a, a theophany. Uh, somehow God manifests himself in his presence. You know several examples of that. Uh, the fourth man in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the voice out of the burning bush, Moses heard. Manifestations of God. So when we hear the angel of the Lord, we know this is a, a manifestation of God himself. And instead of getting mad at him, he cooked bread for him. Do you love this? I'm a mother. I love this. Woke him up, said, Eat. So he, he ate and he drank some of the water. Then he went back to sleep. Then the angel of the Lord returned and woke him up again and said, okay, eat. I got some more here for you. Eat. 
rest. And then he said, I want you to go up to that, the Mount, uh, what was that Mount? Horeb. <laughs> I want you to go up there and uh, I'm going to speak to you up there. And you, that's the same mountain where Moses heard the uh, burning bush speak to him. Anyways, he went up there. He journeyed over to it, having been strengthened by the food and the rest. And he went up into this cave. And then God said to him, okay, what are you doing here? I don't know if he said it like that. I'm saying it like a Jewish mother. What are you doing here? But he said, what are you doing here? And out came his complaint. And he said, you know, I have been zealous for you, God. But they wouldn't accept your covenant. And they broke down your altars. And, and they're killing all the prophets. And I'm the only one left. And then the voice said to him, go out on the side of the mountain. I'm, I'm going to pass by. My presence is going to pass by. So he stood out there. And this magnificent wind that just rocked everything. And then the earthquake that shook and the rocks shook. And then a fire. But each time it said God was not in the wind. God was not in the fire. God was not in the earthquake. And then came a gentle, still voice. And that was God. And then he said to him for the second time, Okay, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he poured out his complaint again. I'm the only one left. They wouldn't accept you. They tore down the asphalt and they're trying to kill me. And, you know. and then God said to him, he said, okay. He talked to him and we're assuming the gentle voice was still going on. He's not slapping him upside the head. He's saying, okay, listen, Elijah, this is what I want you to do. He gave him instructions. I want you to go down there. I want you to anoint Elisha. I want you to do this. And, da, da, da. and uh, by the way, there are 7,000 still who have not bowed to Baal. Uh, you all know that story, but, but to me, the gentleness with which God treated him, fed him, let him sleep, gave him some more bread, then gave him an audiovisual presentation showing that he wasn't always in these great things, but sometimes he was a gentle voice. He cooked for him. I love that. And the New Testament, we have example of him cooking for us too. Uh, this is a beautiful verse. John 21, 12. Come and have breakfast. You know who said that? Jesus. The disciples are in the boat. Jesus is on the shore. Now, this is after his resurrection. He has seen the disciples. We think this is the third time. The first time he appeared with the disciples and, and Thomas wasn't there. The next time... Uh, uh, Thomas was there and he saw all of them. And then this time he was on the shore and he saw them fishing, not very successfully. He said, boys, throw the net on the other side. And they did and they hauled so many fish they couldn't even get the nets into the boat. And then John recognized, it's the Lord. And so they went whipping off to the shore. Of course, Peter first because Peter is, in my estimation, a little bipolar. He's either denying Jesus or he's the first one to step out of the boat anyway. So Jesus... So Peter runs to the shore because Jesus is saying, come and have breakfast. <laughs> he cooked fish for them. And he made bread for them. We don't have any indication that Jesus had ever approached Peter before this about what he had done, about his denying him three times. We don't have any indication that did. So this was probably the first time. So they ate. Everybody was comfortable. They had lots of fish. Everything was good. Then Jesus takes Peter aside and says, Peter, do you love me? Oh, yes, Lord, you know I do. Okay, but Peter, do, do you love me? Oh, Lord, you know I do. Why are you asking this? And then again, Peter, do you love me? I don't know. Sometimes people say three times because he denied him three times. I don't know. But when God asked him, when Jesus asked him those questions... He then said, now I have work for you to do. He didn't throw him out because he'd been an idiot. He didn't push, put him aside because he hadn't been perfect. He just reaffirmed his love. You're mine, aren't you, Peter? You're mine. Okay, feed my sheep and follow me. Two beautiful examples of God cooking for us. As a mother cooks for a child. As a mother comforts a child. 
I just love those. Maybe it's because I have this thing about food. I love food. I love it too much, but... So then, that's literally cooking for them. And then we have that verse in the Psalm, Psalm 23, 5, where it says, He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Wow. In the presence of your enemies? Some say the shepherd and sheep analogy is carried on down to verse 5. Some say, no, it's a whole new one. He's now presenting himself as a host. He's prepared a banquet for them. But the key part is it's in the presence of their enemies. And so that can say to us today, what is the enemy surrounding you right now? Is it the outcome of this pandemic? Have you, have you lost your business? Have you lost a lot of money? Have you lost a loved one? God forbid. What are you going through? Is it finances? Is it trouble in the family? What is it? What are you going through? And, and I believe God says to us, in the middle of all that, I am spreading a table for you. I will feed you. I will comfort you in the middle of all this. He comforts us today. He makes a table for us today. So he doesn't literally feed us now, but how does he feed us and comfort us now? Well, I think there are several ways. One is when we come to the table of the Lord, communion. We come to participate in the body and the blood to remember. And when you're feeling down and overwhelmed by the enemy around you, to pause and take time to remember, this is the price you paid for me. I really am forgiven. You really do love me. And the community of it, you're doing it with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. That fellowship, that communion, that's one of the ways he comforts us. Another way he comforts us now is, um, I just lost my place there. Oh, yeah, is sometimes with, just with his scripture. Sometimes you can read the scriptures and, you know, you do it a lot and you read it. But every once in a while, God uses one scripture specifically to speak comfort into your heart. I remember once I was going through something and uh, terribly concerned for someone in my family, terrified for someone in my family. Panic was starting to grip my heart because there was nothing I could do. And I was saying, God, God, what are you doing? And you know what immediately popped into my head? Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. I didn't even know where it was in the Bible. I found out later it's in Psalm 62. I don't remember ever having learned it, but it jumped into my spirit and immediately I felt the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. Find rest, O oh my soul. Where? In this? Or maybe you can do that? No, in God alone. In God alone. And I was comforted. Sometimes we have to teach our children how to soothe themselves, how to self-soothe. Sometimes with a blankie or somebody, when you're not right there, they can soothe themselves. I have a little grandson. God love him. Beautiful. Two years old. Gorgeous. And we saw him doing this a couple times, and we were quite surprised. He was upset. He wasn't getting his way, and he didn't like that. I can't, he says. He's, he was mad. But then he sort of stood at the wall and went, and then he had another little cry, and then, and then he turned around, and he was okay. And we were saying, is he, is he learning to self-soothe? Has he just learned how to soothe himself? Sometimes we need to do that when we can't sense the comfort of God. I was driving down the highway one day, overwhelmed with grief again for someone that I loved very much. And I didn't know what to do. And I, didn't, and I remember saying to God, God, please, please, if I ever needed to feel, to sense your presence and your comfort, it's now and nothing, nothing. So I self-soothed. I said, God, I really, I really wanted to feel your presence. But since I cannot feel it, I will rest on what I know to be true. 
And I know you hold me and my children in the palm of your hand. A couple months later, it was Mother's Day. And you know what someone gave me for Mother's Day? A ceramic figurine of a hand with a child nestled in it. Had God heard me on the highway? Yeah. Did I automatically feel his comfort? No. I self-soothed. I encouraged myself with the things that I knew to be true from his word. Sometimes he comforts us through the people of God. Community, that's why we need each other. I remember one time at our church camp. Again, I guess I get overwhelmed a lot in my life. Overwhelmed with personal pain that I didn't know how to deal with. And I went up to the altar and I just cried. And this retired minister came up to me. He saw my pain. He felt my pain. He just put his arms around me and cried with me. Oh, and then he prayed too, but he cried with me. If that man could feel that for me. Is that how my Jesus sees me? He weeps with us. He feels our pain. The people of God. I'm suggesting to you today that God can even speak to you sometimes through music. He brings back a spiritual song or a hymn or a, a something and you're touched. Very concerned about someone in my family another time. And I heard the song, there is always a place at the table. There's a feast that is waiting all your own. Your place, listen to this one. Your place is set each time the family gathers. But it will never be the same till you are home. Some of you need to come to the table. It's set there for you. Some have been away from the table and you think, no, I got to come back. I need the comfort and love of a nurturing parent right now. I need to be fed. Come to the table. Some of you are already at the table, but maybe you've pushed back a little. Time to pull up close. Time to pull your chair up close to the table and taste of the food and let him speak to you. And if you have never known the comfort and love of a caring mother, you can get it directly from him. Not only is he a father to the fatherless, he is a mother to the motherless. Pull into the table. Come home. Come home. Father, I'm asking you to just put that, that thing in people's heart like you do that says, come home. I ask you, Father, to, to encourage us to pull up closer to the table, to sense you, to eat from your banqueting table. Do this, Lord, this morning as we sit in your presence, as we sit in our living rooms, as we are together with our family. Speak to us in our hearts, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I confess Bowing here I find my rest Without you I'd fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, 
And every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. My sin runs deep. Your grace is more Where grace is found Is where you are And where you are Lord, I am free Holiness Is Christ in me Where you are Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. And every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. So teach my soul to rise to you. When temptation comes my way, when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay When I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Lord, I need Pastor Nathan, and uh, thank you also, Joanne. Uh, what a powerful uh, word. God comforts us, uh, just like a mother comforts her children. Beautiful. Thank you, Joanne. And, and uh, you know, Joanne is on Facebook, Joanne Goodwin. Just search for her or go to my Facebook page. She's one of my friends. Why don't you just go to her page and tell her you heard this today and you were blessed. Let her know. Um, what you've experienced uh, in this today. Thank you, Pastor Nathan, for that song, too, at the end, just so powerful. So, uh, Heavenly Father, we, we bow before you, um, just asking you to comfort us. There are some here in this place who raised their hands before and, and signifying that they needed something from you. And, and whatever that is, I pray that they pull themselves up to the table a little closer so you can feed them, you can comfort them. Uh, may we constantly be reminded of how much you love us 
and how much you are there for us, even in this very challenging time. And to the name of Jesus be glory and power in his church and in each of you and each of your lives here. And in the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for being a part of this. And, and if, if you have been here uh, for the first time uh, today, if this is your uh, first time with us and uh, you want to just let us know that you've been a guest here and you're, um, you're, you're, you're with us now, just if you could do that. That would be great. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, let us know at uh, info at gtpcperk.com. Uh, we'd love to have a record of your visit and uh, somehow connect back with you. Well, um, thank you everyone for being here this morning and uh, may God's presence be with you as you go. Uh, maybe we can put on all the microphones and uh, just have a time of, of fellowship as we, um, as we sign off this morning. <laughs> Bye, Andrew. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to see you today. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye. Brenda and Kenny. Bye. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Randy, Carol. Randy, Carol. Yeah. 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 Yeah.